everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. I have for you today, uh, arguably the last one in a little while for me, for this series anyways, we have the Disney villainous Yizma, which was published in 2020 by Ravensburger. Here's that 10 second spiel you can all skip if you're a regular listener. Hey, Ravensburger was established in 1883. They were founded in Germany. They released their first board game in 1884, and for the next three generations, they focused on educational publications and games. They got into the jigsaw business in the 1960s, and they are currently a $600 million company with 2,000 employees spread out all around the world. They are clearly a licensed distributor for the Disney brand um, because they've done all of these and lots of other ones included in their Disney-themed publications are two of the largest available commercially uh, manufactured puzzles in the world measuring 22 and a half feet by 6 and a half feet with over 40,000 pieces. Someday, someday I'll build one of those, someday. All right, the puzzle at hand, the Disney villainous Yizma. And I will confess that if I had not watched the movie Emperor's New Groove, I would have no idea how to say this name. Uh, Y-Z-M-A is not part of my regular diction, and I will stick to uh, Yizma. All right. So the individual artists for this movie, I should say this puzzle, are not given on the box. They are, of course, the talented team at Disney responsible for making The Emperor's New Groove. So if you want to see the long, long list of folks involved, go ahead and rent the 2000, the movie from the year 2000, The Emperor's New Groove, and, and watch it with your kids, or watch it as an adult. It's pretty funny. Little tidbit, I know I toss these in here. So I've commented before that a lot of these puzzles, the villains are purple. Right? It seems to be a, a theme at Disney. Well, in the trivia section of this puzzle, they actually kind of give a hint as to why. And I'll just I'll quote the IMDB database here, and they say, Yizma usually wears purple, a, co a color often associated with madness and royalty. True to life, purple is considered a less likable color in some cultures. As an example, uh, this would be purple would be seen as the color of death in Japan. Well, I guess that is the the root behind why Disney has so many of these villainous puzzles with shades of purple. Uh, again, I learned something. A little, little tidbit of trivia. Alright, let's talk strategy. Well, I have built a lot of these puzzles in this particular brand and have the strategy pretty much down pat. The, the list is long and I will shamelessly self-promote here. We've done Hades, the Evil Queen, Ursula, the Queen of Hearts, Radigan, Dr. Facilier, Jafar, Captain Hook, and Scar, and now Yizma. This is the last one in my collection for a little while. There are, I believe, three more titles out there that I'm tracking down, and I will add them and, and, and finish the entire series. At least that's the plan. Uh, that's future stuff, of course. The matter at hand is strategy. Well, we've learned that the um, border is really not worth doing early on in the puzzle. It is pretty much a single single shade with a line through it. Uh, it can be done, but there's not much to be gained by it as far as time goes. You're better off just waiting to the end and, and putting those pieces in. Again, just it's abnormal, and most puzzles you build the border, right? This is just not one of those puzzles. This whole series has been that way. And then after that, well, we focused on the main character, Yizma, and the, and the purple color in the center of the puzzle, along with the what I think is the game piece, as this is all based on a game of some kind. It is a bright purple with a, an aura about it that makes it easy to find. And then from there, all the picture frames. Most of them are unique enough that you can identify which frame it is, and then the colorful little cells on the inside which are taken from scenes directly from the movie. Many of which feature arguably the most entertaining character, Kronk. Uh, so, uh, I watched the movie again just to, just to hear 
those lines. Uh, so after all that, you know, it seems haphazard. You end up building all the little frames, little subdivisions, and, and stacking them around. And then you kind of put them together at the end. Um, it, it flows pretty easily, pretty smoothly. Again, we've built a lot of these. All right, let's talk about some of the st statistics of this puzzle. It is a thousand piece puzzle. Uh, it took, oh, just under three hours to make, which is pretty quick, not our fastest. Scar, for some reason, was the fastest out of the group, but this is not far behind there at the three hour mark. Um, yeah, a lot of that comes from probably just doing lots of these, that they've become very routine. Uh, so I'm gonna still classify this as an easy puzzle. All right. Now that I've said that, I guess that leads into the review. I'm going to rate this puzzle in five different categories. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. I'm going to rate this puzzle in four different categories on a scale of one to five. The first category is the puzzle material quality itself. Ravensburger uses a recycled blue chip material, and I'm going to give it a three, which for recycled material is above average in my experience, but Ravensburger does a very good job. And, uh, except for the little blue dust that's everywhere. I did see a comment posted, which made a lot of sense, and that was pour the pieces into a sifter first to shake out all the dust. And, and perhaps for this brand name, that will be the strategy going forward. Uh, for the other types of puzzles I've made, I don't find it to be necessary, but I'll, I'll give that a try. I'll, I'll thank that person who left the comment on the video for that little tidbit. The next category is the puzzle cut quality itself. This puzzle is a three, right where it should be. Uh, the pieces fit together cleanly. Uh, there's only mom little moments of doubt that you've put the piece in the wrong spot, and it's usually more of a visual thing than a fit thing. You find them and, and correct your little mistakes. So a three, right where it should be. It doesn't detract from the puzzle at all. Um, it's a clean, clean pieces, how they all fit in there. It's Pretty good. Difficulty, well, thousand piece puzzle, less than eight hours, gotta go with a two. I gave Scar a one because it was so easy, but this one's in line with all the other puzzles in this series, so the difficulty rating is a two. It's a good family build, and puzzles like this in general are great because um, with the difficulty being where it is, you can involve the younger members of your family and they all get to experience the, the joy of building a, a, a wonderful puzzle. Frameability. Easily the most subjective of all the categories. It's my personal opinion of if I was the type of person to seal a puzzle and keep it forever, would this make the list? Or is it fine art? Or am I never going to look at it again? Alright, well it's a three. Um, obviously lots of artists involved in creating something like this, but in my in my eyes it is not fine art, right? It's not going to be in a museum. It certainly may hang in a Disney studio somewhere, but it's not going to be in your your local museum. So I'm going to give it a three. It's right where it should be. It literally feels like a poster. If you're a fan of the game or the movie, I can see how a young adult would want to collect all these posters and have them hanging in their room as their, their favorite villains. Uh, Yzma makes the list of the most entertaining of the villains. She's pretty funny. I give her a lot of good little quips. Uh, I can see why she would be extra popular. Overall. Alright, overall, it's not a linear thing in, in, in that respect, but it feels a little bit that way as I'm going to give this a 3, which is in line with the rest of the scores. Um, it's, yep, um, an enjoyable puzzle. I'll build it again. I'll certainly loan it out and know that the person borrowing it from me will enjoy the puzzle. All right, at the end here, you're going to see me take the edge pieces, put them in a little plastic bag. That's just to save me a little time next time when I go to build this puzzle or whomever I lend it to. So, And then I'll put the rest of the pieces in a big Ziploc bag, so if I drop the box, or lots of boxes, I don't lose pieces or get them intermixed. I appreciate everyone out there that takes 10 minutes out of the day to watch these one of, one of these videos, so if you like it, go ahead and click the like button and uh, maybe even subscribe to the channel. That would be, again, appreciated. I look forward to bringing you folks more puzzles. 
different subject matter on the way. This will be the last of the Disney ones for a little bit. Uh, hope you enjoyed them all. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.